Well, hi there. Everybody knows what a spider is. But I find that most people don't really know what they look like. If I told you to draw a spider, there's a very good chance that you would draw something similar to this. That's not too bad. I've certainly seen worse. There are many things that can be learned from this diagram. First, this drawing correctly communicates that spiders have two body segments. And this is true. Sometimes students will draw one or three body segments. If that's you, don't feel bad. You're in good company. And you've already learned something from this drawing. Very nice. Also, you may have learned from this drawing that spiders have eight legs. I've seen many drawings with four or six, so some people may have learned that spiders have eight legs from this drawing. Very cool. Also, spiders have fangs and some eyes on their front body segment. This is all accurate. We can learn a great deal from this drawing. But I think we all recognize that this drawing is not perfect. It may be very far from perfect, but it does have some utility. If you know more about spiders than the average person, you may already be able to draw a spider. But this is definitely the most common spider drawing that I see. But what if you know a bit more about spiders? Like, for example, what if you took a look at a picture of a spider for just a second? I want for you to pay attention to two things in particular. Do the legs come off of the front segment or the back segment? And how many legs does it have? OK. Do the legs come off of the front segment or the back segment? Hopefully, you noticed that they come off of the front segment. It is amazing how much more realistic our drawing becomes if we simply move the legs from the back segment, the abdomen, to the front segment, called the cephalothorax, or prosoma. Notice that we haven't changed anything else about this drawing. Most people think that the legs are on the abdomen, but at the same time, almost everyone recognizes the spider as more realistic when the legs are moved to the correct location. Our drawing could still be used to illustrate all of the true principles of our old drawing, but it's even more useful now. And how many legs did you count? 10? Spiders don't actually have 10 legs. These two in the front are big, but not as large as the legs. They're called pedipalps and are used mostly to assist with feeding and mating, though they can be used for walking as well. And if I add these onto my drawing, it becomes a bit better still. And the reality is that the more that I observe real spiders, and the more that I test the accuracy of my spider drawing against the reality, the more accurate and useful my drawing can become. At some point, I may produce a drawing that is nearly indistinguishable from a photograph of a spider. You could learn a lot from such a drawing. But is it a spider? And so it is with science. Science is always attempting to improve upon the usefulness of its models of reality. The longer we test the predictions of our models against reality, the more accurate of a model we can produce. Compared to our most current models, our old models may look quite archaic and wrong. They are, but they were also very useful. Someday our current models will probably look as bad compared to our future models as these old models look to our current ones. At no point will our models become the reality. At best, a drawing of a spider is a super accurate and detailed drawing. There's never a spider. But our models of reality allow us to understand our world so much better and make predictions that allow us to make decisions in the present that are more likely to lead to desired outcomes in the future. And now you know. If you learned something today, please like this video. If you'd like to learn more in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell. And we hope to see you real soon.